What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskol! Welcome back to Resident Evil Village. This first bonus, we'll be looking over what special features are unlocked after beating the main campaign, as well as some topics I didn't get to cover during the Let's Play. So let's jump in! After you beat the game, a new tab opens up on your main menu called Bonus. And this is where you find all the fun stuff. In the Extra Content Shop, this is where you can buy the Side Mode Mercenaries, you can buy special models of all the characters, as well as all the weapons and enemies. This is also where you can buy concept art, as well as new weapons once you unlock them. And also, one of the best parts, infinite ammo once you have fully upgraded a weapon and got all of their special parts. But you'll notice this costs currency. So where do we get this money? Well, that's where the challenges comes in. In challenges, this is where you earn your currency to purchase those rewards. You unlock challenges for basically everything you do in the game. Killing a bunch of enemies, using specific weapons to kill them with, playing through the game multiple times, faster and on different difficulties, sometimes with certain stipulations. You're gonna have to go through a knife-only run if you want to collect all these challenges. There's also a few specific things you can do that I did during the Let's Play, such as killing the crows or collecting all the goat statues. Reading all the files, stuff like that. When the Winter's Expansion came out, more challenges showed up for Mercenaries, as well as Shadows of Rose. And because of this, there is now more CP than there is needed to purchase everything. Basically what I'm saying is, it's a lot easier to get all the infinite ammo. Another fun thing is, a lot of the challenges are tied to achievements and trophies in the game. So if you're trying to complete your trophy collection or all the achievements in the game, doing the challenges will actually help you out with that. Now that we know how to obtain our special things, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Over here in Figures, you can view high-quality models that were used throughout the game. Some of them have motion and physics, so you can finally see what Moreau's flab looks like, or how flowing the lichen's hair is. It's a fun way to see what enemies look like without them attacking you. I love that you can see Heisenberg's eyes behind his glasses. In fact, there's a lot of eyes that you can see now that you can zoom in and look at all these high-quality models. Along with all the main characters and enemies that you can look at, you can also see how your guns look. Look at that glorious Capcom detail. The best part is, some of the models are the vanilla gun that you get when you first obtain the item, as well as their fully upgraded model. After you have viewed every single figure, and of course you have to buy them all, you actually get an achievement for looking at all of them. You can't just buy all of them, you actually have to look at all of them. Make sure none of them say new and you'll get the trophy slash achievement. Over here in concept art, this is just like the figures. This is where you can view what could have been and what stayed in the final product. Each image has special notes from the developers. If you're wondering where those specific details I mentioned in the ALP were from, almost all of it came from here.
Same deal as the figures. After you've viewed all the concept art, you unlock an achievement. Over in videos, if you ever wanted to see what goes into game development, check out the videos you unlock after beating the game. You have a video going over the level design as well as character design, basically going from concept to full 3D high-def models. There is a complete version of the opening Village of Shadow story, as well as a making of, just in case you wanted some extra details. My favorite by far is the mocap video where you see the actors creating the cutscenes. By watching this, you find out that there were a few changes between the initial recording and final development. One example is there's a lot less naughty language in the opening. What the fuck? Sorry, Ethan. The side mode that you can buy from the extra content shop is the mercenaries. This is a series staple, and it's back and better than ever. Ethan versus a horde of enemies. Pick up power-ups and score kills in a limited time to get better ranks. I'll have a bonus looking specifically at mercenaries, so I'll just leave it as, this is the best mercenaries has ever been. Especially if you own the Winter's Expansion. You get so much more for your money. So if you only have the vanilla game, this is where this part of the bonus would end. But the Winter's Expansion and the Trauma Pack DLC actually added a lot more that you can see. Shadows of Rose is the separate campaign that we looked over during the initial LP. It follows Rosemary Winters and her quest to get rid of the Mega Mycet, and defeat Mother Miranda, and finally meet Ethan face to face. Well, face to... shadowed face, however you want to say that. Mercenaries Additional Orders, again, we'll get to that in a separate bonus, but it is so much fun. This is probably the most fun I've ever had with mercenaries, bar none. And I can't wait to talk about it in full. As mentioned earlier, more challenges are given to you for mercenaries additional orders, as well as Shadows of Rose. This is where the extra CP comes in so that you don't have to finish every single challenge in order to buy everything. Some extra fluff comes in the form of The Tragedy of Ethan Winters. This came with the Trauma Pack DLC, and it includes what is essentially a concept art book for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, as well as more concept art for Resident Evil Village. This is also where I got some extra info that I mentioned during the main LP, thanks to the director's notes. One part of the Trauma Pack DLC that I never actually looked at until recording this video was the Baker Incident Report. This report is essentially some extra fluff to fill in some of the smaller gaps between Biohazard and Village. Told from the perspective of Zoe Baker, you get to see what happened to her after the Baker Incident and how the whole situation was covered up. It also gives some more story regarding the BSAA, Chris Redfield and his agenda with the connections, but I think my favorite part of the entire story the fact that Zoe stayed in contact with Mia, and was happy to hear that they were not only safe, but had a daughter! All of these characters deserve happiness. The last thing we'll take a look at, and this is also part of Trauma Pack DLC, are specialty filters from Biohazard. This is 100% cosmetic, it doesn't change any main part of the game. Your typewriters become tape players, you can add a cool VHS filter, which I'll admit is pretty sweet, because it happens to both cutscenes and gameplay, it's all over the place. You can also make the save theme into the main theme of Biohazard, Go Tell Aunt Rhody. A lovely weapon, sir!
While I do enjoy this song, I still prefer the original save theme. Personal preference, of course. I'd actually like to jump back into the main game and go over some miscellaneous topics that I either missed or that make more sense with ending context. One small detail that I really like about the game is actually the opening screen. It changes depending on what time of day you are in the game. And by that, I mean how far along you are in the story. Here's how it starts. Here's after beating Beneviento House. I believe here's after beating the Stronghold. And here is where you're either playing as Chris or about to fight Mother Miranda. It still blows my mind that this entire game took place over an entire day. The opening actually reads a lot differently since we now know that Mia is Mother Miranda in this scene. When you mention her memory, she snaps at you immediately and says there's nothing wrong with her memory. There's nothing wrong with my memory trying to cover up the fact that she wouldn't know what Mia would remember. This also leads to my theory that every mirror was being covered because that would blow Miranda's cover. Apparently, she can be seen through mirrors during her mimicry, or maybe this is indeed just developers wanting to cut down on processing power and not wanting to do reflections. I totally understand. Another thing is actually when Mia gets shot in the opening. She doesn't look pained, she looks shocked. Which means, somebody found out it was Miranda, and she's trying to think on how to get out of this. Nice little attention to details that you wouldn't notice your first time because you don't know the twist yet. <laughs> well, hi there, little Rose. <laughs> I swear I'll never forget you again. The first lichen that you meet in the game and then you have to fight and kill, you don't actually have to fight and kill. If you actually run past it and go pick up the bolt cutters, he just flees. This is especially helpful in Village of Shadows, where every lichen takes like 30 to 40 bullets to kill, so if you don't want to fight it, you don't have to. But the next one you do have to kill, so just keep that in mind. Speaking of the opening, it is on a timer. I know I was a little back and forth on how to actually get through the opening, but it is on a timer. Consider that every time Ethan speaks, about one minute passes and you have to survive for about four minutes. You can actually deduce what is going to happen next based on what your character is doing. I'll have a link in the description for a video that I found that goes over how to survive the opening ambush on any difficulty. It actually makes it as smooth and as easy as possible, especially on Village of Shadows. So if you're having trouble getting past that opening, give that video a watch. So you know how later on in the game when you have to go see Moreau, and you realize, oh wait, this is an entire section of the map that hadn't been opened. When did it open up? Well, believe it or not, during the opening ambush, Urius is the one that opens the way to Moreau's domain. I just never noticed it before, I never came back here. Speaking of the opening ambush and it being on a timer, if you actually have your back up against a wall, it'll never end. You can sit here as long as possible, but as soon as your back leaves the wall and there's enough space to where a model of a lichen can fit behind you, the ambush can end anywhere if enough time has passed. It's actually kind of funny to see a lichen come out of nowhere, grab you in a building, toss you, and all of a sudden you're outside in the exact spot where you need to be. The scene where you first meet Lady Dimitrescu along with her daughters face to face, there's one line that reads completely differently now that you've played through the entire game. Hmm. Ugh. Starting to go a little stale. Then let's devour his man flesh quickly, mother! But she notices that Ethan's blood is going stale. That is a hint that he has been dead the entire time and his blood is turning to mush and mold. But the thing is, even though Dimitrescu doesn't like it, her daughters do. Mother said stale, but I can look delicious. Dimitrescu wouldn't like blood that's going stale, but her daughters are bugs. They would greatly enjoy rotting flesh and blood. Again, details, they're all over the place. Speaking of Ethan's blood, if you check his stump when you pick up his hand after it being cut off, there is some mold within his bloodstream. You can actually see it starting to take over as his body decomposes. It's always been there, you just didn't know the context until way later. When you're fighting the first daughter, Bela, if you actually guard the entire time, 
she basically tells you to stop being a coward. Move your hands! There was a hidden cutscene during the Let's Play where Lady D is talking to Cassandra, basically saying, all bets are off, go kill the man thing. But the fun thing about this entire scene is depending on where you come into the main room, the scene changes. Cassandra, a word. What is that man to you? You're my daughter, now act like it. Of course, mother. Not only that, but I was on the right track when it came to getting alternate scenes based on who you kill first between Cassandra and Daniela. If you kill Cassandra first, then Daniela, and then go to the place where the main scene is supposed to happen, this is what happens instead. Cassandra? Cassandra? No! How much blood and sweat do you think it took to raise those daughters? You have incurred an impossible debt! Another small detail is, if you interact with Lady Dimitrescu oh after she does any of these extra scenes, or after you've killed one of her daughters and meet her, sometimes she will have special dialogue mourning over the loss of the daughter you just killed. It was cold, wasn't it, Daniela? <laughs> Cassandra, you pushed yourself too far. That's really sad, except for the part where they almost killed me, so... I don't know, screw them. You remember this cutscene where Lady Dimitrescu is talking on the phone, and she's looking in the mirror, and many opportunities where she could just clearly see you? Well, she can see you. Think of it as, even though she caught a glimpse of you and complains over the phone to Mother Miranda, this is all a ploy to loop around and eventually catch you as you're trying to leave with the key. But not only that, there's a piece of concept art which had this scene in mind, where she would see you in the mirror and give chase. But they decided to, you know, give her a vanity to throw and a phone call to get mad at. So take that as you will, but I like to believe that she saw you the entire time. Again, this is just personal speculation, but the evidence backs it up. When Lady D is in human form, you actually can't hurt her, but you can stun her. A well-placed headshot will do the trick. She doesn't take too kindly to it, though. Playing games? Is that all? Another note, and yeah, this is kind of embarrassing, but I figured it out, had a little epiphany as I was going through the game in the latter part of the Let's Play, where I found out Alcina Dimitresk, Bela Dimitresk, Cassandra Dimitresk, and Daniela Dimitrescu, A, B, C, D. Why didn't I piece that together? I don't know. But did you know they actually make a cameo in Beneviento House? Right here! There's a box of kitty litter! There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G all over the place! There's more siblings! No! Actually, I have a funny feeling that this is just a texture that the developers forgot to put extra text on, or didn't care. Either way, it's really funny just to see a box with a bunch of letters on it that really should have been logos or something else. Speaking of Beneviento House, if you listen very carefully whenever you go into a locker, Ethan starts to hyperventilate. I did a variety of tests before the baby chases you, after the baby chases you, whether it's in light or dark, underneath the bed, in the locker, I've tried it all, and I've come to a conclusion about Ethan. He hates closed spaces and is afraid of the dark. I guess Super Dad has a couple of cracks in his armor. During your fight with Angie in Beneviento House, she actually does change up her hiding spot if you take too long. The dolls are set on a timer to attack you, so if you can't find Angie, eventually they will attack. And if that happens, she changes her pathing to an entire new group of hiding spots. I believe there's only one spot that we didn't see during the main Let's Play between first and third person. So, yeah, she's right over here now. Not the best hiding spot because it's still out in the open, but eh, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. She didn't have much to work with. During Mother Miranda's fight, where she ambushes you in the darkness, you can actually end this early by dealing enough damage or by shooting a flash grenade to light the place up. 
shoot one directly at her, it stuns her, it lights the whole place up, and ends that entire phase early. During the Mother Miranda fight, she's talking the entire time and boasting how she's better and that, you know, she's found a vessel for her, Eva. But she actually has special victory cries if you die to her. She also has quite a few. This woman's quite a talker. How lucky you are to die before your child. And that's everything I wanted to cover for now. Next time on Resident Evil Village, we'll be looking at New Game Plus and the fun weapons you can unlock. See you guys next time.